Hey guys, this is the um, walkthrough of the third major release of the modular town system. There's, I'm going to timestamp this so you can jump around and really see how to use everything in detail because there's a lot that came out with this particular release. There's a lot of new, like just really beautiful buildings that you can use, um, new homes, new shops. I've split out shops that were originally connected, so now you can have some flexibility in terms of how you lay them out. Um, yes, I've got the magic shop that everybody loves now as a deployable uh, building, but there is there's a lot going on here, and this um, walkthrough is going to not only walk you through these, but also how to migrate from the old token attacher. So token attacher 4.0 has been released and everything in this new world and everything that I've released previously has been coded to the new token attacher. And you will have a relatively easy migration process, but you do have to do a migration process in order to leverage the new assets. But you can see we've got damage tiles that you can just drop in and um, instantly damage your walls and buildings and maps in general. Um, these are all just sort of movable and can be added wherever you think they can be helpful. And then um, as usual, I've listed, I have put some sample maps in here and marked them as new. You'll find them in your compendium. And then I've also released the all the new releases on one big giant map. So this is a 64 by 64 map. You can see that you know the, the marketplace, which was already huge, is very small compared to all the other things that have been deployed. So this, uh, I'll, I'll walk you through all of this stuff, how to use it. There's some new facades with uh, teleportation zones in it. There's dynamic traps, and there's a bunch of other goodies in here. So uh, without further ado, let's walk through it. So first things first, you want to get everything migrated to the new token attacher 4.0. So first, if you've installed my premium and Towns modules, then that those that module will automatically update your compendiums for BaileyWiki that matter. So there's going to be updates to the actors, uh, journal entries, macros. There's some new macros here, and there's some new um, scenes um, in in reformatted scenes to operate with the new token attacher. So you're, it's going to automatically update everything, and you're good to go on your compendiums. Anything you import from these will be ready to go. What you need to worry about is migrating anything that you already have in your existing world. So any of your scenes or anything that is, has token attachers either in a scene or in your actor's uh, sidebar here, um, those need to be reformatted for the new token attacher. So what you want to do is you want to create a new scene and just call it anything. We'll call it, we'll call it migration. And it doesn't matter how big it is, and you want to just leave it on its default grid size of 100. You'll save those changes, and you'll see your new scene will show up here on the side. Activate your scene, so now that you're on it. And now what we want to do, and just to be sure, we'll just activate it. Now what we want to do is go into our settings, configure settings, module settings, and uh, down below, you will find Token Attacher GM menu. Now, you may automatically be prompted by Token Attacher to do this migration when you first install it. But if you don't, then you just come here. You reset the data model and you force restart automa automatic migration. Um, the reason we opened up this scene is because Token Attacher 4.0 will use the scene with its 100 DPI squares to take all of the actors that have prefabs attached to them, and it'll use that scene to essentially recode all of those actors to work with 4.0. So it, for me, I have a lot of actors that took just a couple of seconds, uh, but give it time, make sure that it confirms that it's done. And then that once you're done with that, all of your compendiums are good because you're using my, you know, my latest version, and then all of your actors and scenes will also be migrated. Um, if you have any questions or problems, just come hit me on Discord. Okay, so let's look at what's new in the modular town pack. So you see there's a lot of buildings. All of these buildings are additions to the uh, the class two class of buildings. So if you type C2, if you've imported everything into your world and you type C2, you'll get all of these class two buildings. 
And I recommend when you import them, again, to import them, it'll prompt you to put them into a single file. Either pick your existing Bailey Wiki Maps Town Assets file or let it create a new one. And it'll put them in here without these subfolders. And you can then create these subfolders and put these in where you want to. But if you just type in C2, it'll filter down everything that's in these new classes. And it'll give you descriptions of what these things are. Uh, let me just show you some of them. Here we've got you know, an empty building version in case you want to decorate it your own or put some NPCs in there. And then we've got a wine shop because everyone needs one of those in their campaigns. There's a front door and a back door access. And then we have a variation that is a home because a lot of you have asked for, you know, just additional types of homes that you can drop in. This one's got, again, a front door and a back door and a different type of layout than you've seen with the wine shop. Here we've got a bakery. So you come in here and there's enough um, open squares to sort of occupy the bakery as a patron, but then you've got um, where the, the bakers will operate. Uh, there's some uh, noise, some ambient noise for fires and some, some warm lighting there. And we have an empty version of the bakery where you can use this again for anything that you'd like to. The Fletcher is now detached from the other elements, so you can have the Fletcher uh, be on its own. And the same thing with Actually, the, these weren't uh, detached at all. These are just new. Um, yeah, so this is the, the new home. And then you've got a blank version of it. And then you've also got a jeweler. So this is just a jewelry store where your players can come in and interact and buy maybe some magical stuff and some not magical things. The, uh, this is the one I was talking about. The candle maker is now detached as well. So this is now free to put anywhere. It's a really nice shop that I think you can do some really fun things with from an NPC perspective. But that's the candle maker. Here's uh, now a detached home. It used to be attached to the bank. Now it's more kind of more of a high-end home that lives on its own. This is a, one I really like. Um, this came from a Patreon that, that requested this, but this is the Cartography Guild. There's uh, some lighting in here and some walls and stuff like that, but essentially it's just a great meeting place. All of these things are on squares so that NPCs or players can occupy the space. Here's a empty version of that in case you want to use it for something else. This was also, in case you're wondering, the same floor plan as the dojo that you saw in the last release. Here's the bank now separated. So here's the vault. It's got a locked door, it's got a back room with some counting going on, and then it's got the front, front office space. Here's a blank that uses a new shape uh, for the building, so you can make some now some rectangular or some uh, not necessarily square streets. So this introduces the idea to be able to do that. And then while that one's a blank, we have two other versions. We have this one, which is a really nice apothecary that's got all kinds of you know, special effects going on with lighting. Um, it's got a, you know, a locked back room with inventory and clearly some you know, actually making of um, potions and concoctions in there. It's got some sleeping space for your NPC and your shop owner. And then we also have a armory. This armory actually features a bunch of assets from Tom Carto. So you'll notice in here some really nice looking pieces of armor, armor sets. Uh, those are all from Tom Carto's. And in the back room, you've got a you know particularly gleaming, interesting piece. And these are all behind, you know, theoretically a, a metal locked door. Uh, but just a, like a great armory addition. And then I also split out the new tavern and it's adjoining. Um, apartments. You can use these as, you know, an inn um, joining the tavern or just as a separate apartment. Uh, but that exists on its own. There's some ambient noises when you walk into the, uh, into that tavern as well. Um, and then we've got two different, you know, conjoined homes. You can deploy these together, but they have separate roofs, so you can reveal only one or the other as you go. Uh, let me see it. There's some more yet more buildings here. We've got some smaller buildings. Here's a butcher that is extremely messy in his craft. You come in through the front door and then he operates or she operates here in the back. And then you've got an empty version of the butcher just because it's a nice building to have some flexibility with. Um, you've got this uh, 
poem that sits on its own now. Uh, you saw this attached in some previous versions. This is slightly modified. And then you've got the, um, the guard house. So this is a guard house where there's a main eating area, a kitchen, and then essentially a bunk house. It can also be just a bunk house if, uh, or even an inn for that matter if you wanted a place to stay. And now you've got this higher end home, which has an interesting shape to help kind of break things up. Um, you've got the main entry area. You've got a number of uh, bedrooms, some full complete bathrooms. You've got a kitchen. And then you've got this, um, this main study area where there's a nice fire crackling. And you've got ambient noises and fires and things like that and all of those. Then, of course, you have the magic shop that everyone loves. You come in the front of the magic shop. There's, you know, all sorts of things to explore in here, all kinds of ambient noises and things sort of firing and giving off and special lighting effects. In the back room is where the, the shop owner, you know, uh, does his work. Then, of course, he lives back here in the back. And then there's a secret um, entrance behind this bookshelf to what is, you know, decidedly a teleporting room. And so this just makes a nice progression of um, exploration for your players if you want to explore the magic shop. Also in this release are a number of new facades. So there's an entire um, church, series of churches that have been introduced. Those churches all have their own um, maps, which I encourage you to go look at. The church is um, actually the map for the church is sitting in... Um, the premium pack. So if you've updated that pack, you'll have access to these. But the facades for the church are sitting in the town's pack. And these facades are both front facades, which you can, you know, put an actor here in the front. And he will uh, hear the music emanating from the, I'll turn my ambient sound up here. Um, you can hear the music emanating from the different churches. This is the dark church, the evil church. This one's the light church, more holy, and this one's kind of in the middle, uh, dark church, but still uh, not evil. Um, you can just drop these in if you just look for church in your actor's compendium, and you'll find the facade for the front or the facade full, which is this. It's not a building you can actually enter, but it does have all the teleportations and things that you need. For this demo screen, I disabled the teleportations so that they don't accidentally receive a teleport that you uh, put somewhere else. But in the ones that you drag out from the compendium, they have a teleport that's already coded to go to the proper church. You just need to make sure that the church scene is imported as well into your world, and these facades will work for you. There's another type of facade that I've introduced to help accommodate for other types of buildings or maybe entirely different maps from other creators that you want to use. And that's the manor wall. I called it a manor wall because it's just a, it's a wall that's, you know, it's nice. It's covered in maybe moss. Um, it comes in both gated and ungated varieties. It comes in small or large. This is considered the small version of the manor wall. Here's an example of a larger version. This one has a gate that's opened. It's, you know, a lot more uh, run down. And they both come with teleportation pads. And you just need to code those to where you want them to go. Like, you know, let's say uh, the uh, evil manor. And uh, once you do that, I won't save my, my work. Once you do that, then, um, the players, once they gain access here, and again, there's a gated version where you can lock it. Maybe they have to do something to get in, but then they can teleport to that map. You just need to take this um, this this drawing here and uh, copy and paste it into another one. And by the way, these are all locked in with the new token attacher. So you see, I can't actually move this drawing. I can't select it. You need to know that with token attacher, you have this special little button here called toggle quick access, quick quick edit mode. This will let you grab um, things like this and copy it and put it somewhere else. You may find out that that gives you problems, in which case you can just select the, the item and bring up your, um, this is the control token, bring up your uh, UI for token attacher and just unattach or detach everything. And once it's detached, then you can uh, grab and manipulate the items and cut and paste them elsewhere.
you want to find those facades, you can just look up, for example, manor, and you'll find all these facades for the manor wall in their light and, and dark, uh, large and small versions. And of course, you can also resize these using the new token attacher uh, functionality as well, which um, watch my token attacher tutorial if you'd like to see how that works. Next big update is with the marketplace itself. So you can look up marketplace and at the very top, or just look up market, we'll do that first. The very top, this, this larger um, control token, that's the entire marketplace. You can drop the entire marketplace on any map here its control token is, and it'll all materialize. What comes with the entire marketplace is this um, muddy terrain on the bottom. Um, also these banners uh, that you see, these are all just tiles that are attached to that master control token. And of course, all of the little um, vendors inside are also attached to that control token, which is something new with Token Attacher 4.0, is you can attach, you can nest prefabs. So each one of these are individual prefabs that are then put together with all the other tiles and images, and they're connected to the one big marketplace. You can, um, like you saw before, you can open up the um, Token Attacher config and unattach everything. And what that does is liberates all of these little tokens and it lets you move them around and rearrange them. If you don't want to go with the entire market and you just want to go with, uh, let's say you just want a butcher. You have some map somewhere and you want to throw a butcher down or you want to show uh, can the candy and confectioners. You can just drag that out onto any map. If you hold down all, it'll automatically make that um, invisible. And you can see I just put down my candy vendor and it does have roofs module going on. So if you hover over it or if your players walk underneath it, this um, this will disappear and you'll see just the, you know, the, the candy for sale underneath. Um, other things that are going on with the marketplace that are probably important to know, there's, uh, there's a lot of, you know, locked doors and uh, things that you can play around with. Um, you know, here's a here's a, a wagon that if you unlock it for your players and they go inside, you can put an NPC or other things in there, and you can see it's got the roofs module going on as well. All of these simply reveal what's underneath in case there is an overhead. Even this one's got roofs module activated. Uh, this one over here is beasts in cages. Um, there's, you know, there's uh, walls around all of these things. There's even a, a small cage. You can put things inside of there, like NPCs or creature tokens, and um, they will be hidden under these, you know, again, these are all just roofs, tiles. Uh, but you can even put your players in there, potentially, if you wanted to. And you can take this whole unit um, here's the control token for it, and it's over here. If you just type in beasts, oops, not best, then, oh, sorry, that's not what it's called. Um, let's try cages. Yeah, animals in cages is what this is actually called. And you can drag it out into another map and use it for that purposes. For example, it could go into, you know, a, uh, a campsite. And of course, you can always go to the control token after you place it, go into the config for it. If I select my token. Oh, I can't select my token because this one's attached. But you can break these things apart and you can take out this umbrella, for example, because maybe you don't want it in a certain scene. So all of these pieces can be removed and deleted and rearranged. Um, you have a fortune teller here as well that's got a, um, some cool lighting effects. And, you know, there's some very special ways that I do the, the walls to make all of this stuff render in the right way, but it's all just included here. So if you do a search for fortune, you can find um, your fortune teller in the marketplace here. So it says market and then fortune teller. That tells you that you've got the right item there. Eventually, I think I'm going to introduce some thumbnails so that you can find things pretty easy. Uh, next up, this is a change. Or, well, actually, there's two things to talk about here. Um, I have included, because of Forgotten Adventures, has a few NPCs. If you type in NPC, 
you'll find a barkeep, butcher, fisherman, merchant, and then server waitress. These are already set up to use the wildcard um, function. So if I drag one out, it'll randomly select from between two and four alternatives for a barkeep, for example. So here I've got two different barkeeps. These smaller ones are actually um, halfling uh, barkeeps, which is why they're smaller. You can go into the source files and remove halfling, for example, if you don't want them as an option. But you can, these are just meant to be able to just quickly throw down an NPC into, you know, all these different stalls or other places you may need them. The other uh, change here is that the tiny hut, um, somebody pointed out that I didn't spec it right. It should have enough for nine squares on the inside, which is its capacity. So now it's twice the size that it used to be, but it still works the same way. It's, um, you know, it's got a roofs module that makes it opaque when there's no one standing inside of it. And then it's got, you know, a, a subtle glow inside once you're actually in the, uh, the hut itself. Um, next up, we have traps. So if you look up trap, if everything's imported, you have different types of grass, square, or stone traps. What that's referring to is the outside edge of the trap. These are transparent because they come transparent to users. They come invisible. Now, there's something really special with these traps, a couple things to know about them. First of all, um, you the floor and spike straps are you know simply that. They, they either have a, a flat floor underneath them. And by the way, here's how they come out in their standard size. So there's grass on the outline and then a floor at the bottom. And then you have the spiked version. The reason this is bigger is because I've used um, token attachers um, ability to scale up um, their attachments. So for example, if I wanted to make this one twice as big, I can come in here and put a two instead of a one. They can update it and it'll make everything attached to that token bigger, including walls um, or, you know, diagrams. So for example, here's these one-way walls, meaning a player can walk into the tile and it can't walk out. If a player does walk into this tile, it'll actually show, let me just show you an example. couple things will happen. You can see, you heard that grass sound. Well, what happened was this. Inside of this tile attached to this prefab is a multi-level token hotspot. It's not doing any teleporting, but what it is doing is it's triggering a macro. This is the name of the macro. And then the macro needs the name of the tile that it's going to reveal. So what the macro does, and you can find those macros, in fact, you have to do this if you want to use this function, is if you go into your compendiums, find Bailey Wiki Maps Town, and open that up, you'll find all these macros in here. And I would just go ahead and right click and say, import all content. That'll put them into your macro folder. Your macro folder, if you don't know where it's at, it's right down here. And it'll just dump it into this folder. And there's a, a module you can use to organize this if you want to. You don't actually have to load these macros into your macro bar. You just have to have them existing in your world. They just have to be in this folder. Once you do, then as soon as a player token steps into one of these traps, it will trigger the macro. The macro is going to fire a couple of different sound effects, depending on what kind of trap it is. And then uh, it will reveal this tile to the players to show that they're inside of it. And of course, the walls are already there. So they, they have to make a saving throw. And then the, you as the GM would have to move their token out. Um, right now, for this first, ver first version, you can only have one of these types of traps in each um, map, meaning I can't have more than one grass uh, trap with a floor on it. I can have a grass trap and a grass trap with spikes. Those are two different traps. Um, those traps are here. So you can have one of each of these exist in the same scene, but you can't have more than one of the same one. In a future release, I'm working with Path to hopefully make it so that you can have more than one 
uh, trap and then you can spam these all over the place and have a lot of fun with them. But for the first version, this is it. And you do need to make sure you have the macros installed in order for it to work. One other thing I did want to mention about traps, um, you have a trap called a drop. There's one for grass, square, and stone. And this works a little bit differently than the other traps. The drop trap is actually, um, it works the same way. You can walk in it, you hear a sound, you know, a player steps into it. But there's actually a multi-level token zone in here that actually does something. Um, this trap will automatically teleport the player somewhere. So if you lay down one of these traps as a GM, you have to code this for a destination. And the idea is with this trap that they fall through and they fall into some other map. Maybe it's a, um, you know, a further uh, uh, area of the dungeon or, you know, something else, but they would fall into another map. And so you need to code this um, hotspot to send you there. So this, you can only go in, it teleports you here. Uh, it still, um, you know, fires the, uh, the macros to make the sounds and things like that. Um, but that's how you use this trap. So when you lay it, you have to code it somewhere. And then once a player falls in, they're in and they t instantly teleport to that other map, assuming that you've created the twin of this over on that other map. You need to look into my multi-level token um, tutorial if you don't know how to use multi-level token. But once it's visible, any other players can follow them. They can jump right down the same hole and it will send them to the same destination that you've coded for this as well. So just keep that in mind with the drop traps. Uh, next up is damage tiles. So I have introduced damage tiles of all different varieties. You have, first of all, you have damage tiles for the walls themselves. So this is a town wall. It's got the kind of brick facing side. And there is a damage tile that you can find here. Uh, so different damage tiles. So the damage for walls is, is located here. And you just drag them out as tiles and you put them, oh, sorry, and you put them on the wall. And it essentially uh, makes it look in, um, like you can walk through it. Now you do have to make some changes as a GM. This is something I can't automate. You have to go into your walls and you'll have to, um, you'll have to uh, break the walls. They're already kind of pre-broken, but you'll have to make sure that you can walk through it. Because otherwise, if you leave the walls like they are, normally the walls are connected in, uh, in these. Let me see if I can show you. Oh, I, I can't move it because it's, uh, it's locked. This is another important thing to know. Here, we'll do this. We'll do quick edit. And then we'll go into our walls. And now you can move them. So normally these walls are going to have, um, you know, these walls connected up like this. And by the way, there's a delay because this map is so huge. It's just a lot of processing to be able to do little things. I don't recommend making maps this big. Um, but you will have to shrink the walls back so that, you know, somebody can walk through. You can make the visible damage uh, look the way you want it instantly, but you will have to do some wall work uh, to make it accessible. Now, remember, if you have Quick Edit turned on, you need to turn it off. By turning it off, it will save this prefab in its now current condition. And it does take some time to save, so make sure you give it some time to do that. You have other types of damage. Here's damage uh, for this type of wall. But you also have just tiles that you can lay down. And the way you get to the tiles, you should go into your file picker. You go into Premium Towns module, Maps, Town Square, and under that you have damage tiles. You have all these different options for damage tiles. And then you have your grid size. So if I drag, for example, this out at that grid size, it's a fairly large tile. But if I set my grid size to something like 300, and I drag that same asset out, it's a very small tile. So this gives you some flexibility if you just want to spam um, these different types of uh, damage around you know, these are meant to go, you know, you can rotate them and they're meant to go against like flat areas so that you can show tile or damage kind of peeking out. You may or may not find use for some of those. Um, you also have craters and scorch marks. So you have these in here as well. 
So you can either drag the tile out to make a crater, or you can drag it out here. These are already sized to be either large or small, and you can rotate your craters and you can put them on different objects and things like that just to help show damage applied over time. Maybe there's a siege going on or something like that. Another thing that you should know is that uh, there are a few things here. Um, I've showed you the macros. Those are important to import into your world. You also have journal entries. And if you open up your journal entries, it often gives you hints on things that you need. So for example, in the town, um, you can import this journal entry or just open it from your compendium and you'll get video walkthroughs, all these walkthroughs. You can even look through older assets and how they work, um, uh, existing assets that I didn't cover in this video. You also get links to all the modules that I use. And I recommend you install these modules and, and then either activate them or not, depending on what you're into. Some of them I recommend are you know highly required, like Token Attacher. Uh, here, some of them um, are pretty, pretty good to always have on, like Roofs in, uh, in multi-level token, and other ones are kind of nice to have depending on your performance and how big your maps are, like FX Master or Parallaxia. So I encourage you to get these and install them at least and have them ready to go. This is also a place where you can come and check out these videos in case you ever forget something or want to go back through it. Another two journal entries that are really important are this GM only and the stair entry. If you click on them from the compendium, you can read what they're about. But essentially what these do is these enable your teleportation zones. Um, the reason is, is because all of these zones work, any zones that, are, that I've got created, generally work with multi-level token. A multi-level token has a function where you can initiate a teleport by clicking on a journal entry. These journal entries can apply either to the stair or to the GM only. They can apply anywhere you want, but these are special entries because this stair is configured so that users can interact with it. The permissions for it are such that your players can see it and they can, they can click on it. The GM only is the opposite. It only lets the GM see or even click on that, that item. And depending on where you're at, you may want one or the other, but you need both of these journal entries in your world in order for this, this teleport to work. All they need to do is sit in your, your journal entry um, sidebar. They don't, you don't actually have to put them in your world. But I've already pre-coded many of these to work with stair is really my default one. Sometimes I make GM only if I anticipate that you're going to want control over that. But the way you can interact with it is you can double right click it and it opens up the config. And here at the top, even though you can't see my drop down, you have all of the journal entries in your world and it should be configured to talk to the stair entry. It'll be referring to that. But you can change that. You can click stair and go down to GM only. And now this, this um, journal entry, entry can only be seen or clicked by you as the GM. So I'm going to turn this back to stair. Another thing you need to know is that um, you can have your notes display toggle on or off. And that's client specific. So your players, if they want to see some of these, they may want to turn those on. Um, Multi-level tokens should be smart enough that if even if they have it turned off, if they walk within the teleport zone, it'll work. And by the way, this teleport zone, while you can see it as the GM and you can see the little writing in there, this is all invisible to your players. This is just to help you visually know where you have teleportation zones that you need to be thinking about. And I think that's that's all of the big stuff with this release. It was quite a bit of work to get all of these things out, but you now have quite a bit more to work with. You've got really unfettered uh, ability to, to use these merchants in different types of places that you want to. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and you know, let me know in the comments if there's more ideas that you've got or other things that you'd like to see and I'll, I'll just keep improving on this system uh, over the next month. Thanks so much.